Let's have a look at the starting grid for this, the second race, round two of this year's Shell Australian Touring Car Championship as the cars come around on their warm-up lap. Of course, race one winner, Glenn Seaton, will start from pole alongside Russell Ingle, Murphy and Perkins off the second row. Out of row three, John Bow and Alan Jones. Row four is Dick Johnson and Tony Longhurst. The fifth row of the grid looks like this, John Faulkner, Steve Ellery. Row six, Mark Poole and Terry Finnegan. Row seven has Wayne Gardner and Darren Hossack. Row eight, Trevor Ashby and Ray Hislop from Tasmania. Well, here they come, down into their respective positions. There is the Shell Helix Falcon of John Bow. Both he and Dick Johnson suffering the same problems. Some problems with front end steering as we go on board with Peter Brock. He is back. He didn't do, uh, he didn't break a gearbox. It was in fact a yoke on the tail shaft. The crew worked very, very hard in between race one and two, and he's back out on the track just where we like to see him. Extraordinary run of bad luck with Holden Racing Team. Those uh, clutch problems up the streets of Surface Paradise. And now they've come here and Brock's had another transmission failure. Just a bad run of ouch. Talk to Jeff Gretsch. He uh, can't explain why they're having such a bad run with transmission, but hopefully they'll have it sorted out. Their young gun, the HRT young gun, Greg Murphy, will be keen to go just like this guy. There he is, the 34-year-old from Melbourne. 32-year-old, rather, from Melbourne. Glenn Seaton is set to do it again. Lights are green, we are away. Race two, we are start. The two Castro Commodores got away to a beautiful start. Seaton looked like he got away well also as we have a look. It's one of the Castro Commodores in Russell Ingle. Will lead the pack through. Seaton's boxed in and Perkins goes right around the outside. Absolutely brilliant start from the Castro duo. Russell Engel, big aggressive run on Murphy in that last heat. Murphy reckons Russell used him as a braking marker as they came over the top of Lukey Heights. No love lost between those two. Murphy will have him in his sights as they come down toward Honda for the first time. Race one, winner Glenn Seats back in third, just ahead of Greg Murphy. Then we pick up Alan Jones, followed by John Bow, Dick Johnson. This one is the full distance, 12 laps, hard on the brakes, down into Honda corner they go. Bumper to bumper, door oh. handle, door handle. We've got the Lansvale smash repairs car. Bit of contact back in the pack there, Trevor Ashbury. Lucky to slide along the grass, keep it off the racing line and get back into the battle. Well, there's a great reason for uh, Russell Ingle to go fast in this race because he doesn't want Greg Murphy to catch up. I'm sure you of that. Greg Murphy was absolutely steamed. I caught up with him in the garage after that first heat and he could barely say a word. He was almost frothing at the mouth. He was so frustrated by what happened. So let's have a look at this on the Shell Helix replay. Russell Engel leading the pack up toward Honda Corner, the field shuffling through nose to tail, and back in the pack. As the field get hard on the brakes, there's a bit of contact there. Brock looked like he was involved with that, Terry Finnegan, and there's a car going the outside, that's Darren Hossack in the Wins Commodore. So three cars involved with that one, we get back with the action. We ride with Glenn Seaton in the Ford Credit Falcon, that's Larry Perkins, and have a look how far Russell Engel is, he has just darted away. Well, he's got a dynamite package here. They said earlier in the race, they're running the tyre. They ran at the Australian Grand Prix at Albert Park. It proved the dominant combination. They've gone for the same tyre here at Phillip Island. It's working an absolute treat. Now, Seaton pulled away to a seven-second lead in that opening race. So let's see what he can do this time. Can he come from behind? He is really going well at the moment, sitting in third. But while he's uh, trying to negotiate a deal there with Larry Perkins, Ingle is just creeping away. Russell's got very lucky here. He's got team boss Larry Perkins behind. Larry's going to do his best to hold Glenn Seaton up. We know that Glenn Seaton is faster than the rest of the field. So Larry needs to keep him there as long as possible to give Russell a break that he needs. Seaton still carrying the battle scars of that altercation in the first heat. He's managed to dent out the bumper bar a little bit on the back of the Ford credit back. And look how close he is to Larry Perkins, really applying the thumb screws as he tries to find a gap to get through. The chase up to Russell Engel. We go back aboard the Ford Credit Ford as they wind their way up toward Lukey Heights once again. 240 kilometers an hour, dab of the brakes, back through the gears. Car gets very light over here, and look how close Seaton is going to the back of the Perkins Commodore. We're on with Glenn Seaton. Back of the Castrol Commodore just twitching a little bit of puff of smoke. Glenn Seaton putting the pressure on, and while those two guys are fighting it out, have a look at this. Greg Murphy has come right up into the action now. He is not too far behind Seaton within a car length or two. This is the battle. Second, third and fourth. Jones, a couple of car lengths back. Then we pick up John Bow, and John Faulkner is coming right up on Johnson, a little further back, so he's going extremely well. John Faulkner was doing great times yesterday in practice before his engine blew up. And uh, I thought that John would come through the field. He's up to 10th uh, place in that first, uh, first heat. 
So just watch out for him. Seaton there just showing how much mid-corner speed he's carrying in this Bridgestone shot car. He got a great run out of that corner. Almost got right alongside Perkins as they came down for braking. 270 kilometres an hour. So he knows he's got plenty of speed aboard that car. He's going to be trying to run on Perkins next time around. Murphy, meanwhile, right up behind the Ford Credit Ford in Ford. Well, maybe not. It's not going to be a Seaton picnic today like we all thought it was. Hard on the brakes. Look at this. Oh, Glenn Seaton all over Larry Perkins. Murphy goes the outside option. That's the long way around, but might set him up for the next corner. Murphy gets sideways. Fantastic racing from the 600 horsepower v 8 Look at that grunt as he tries to get into the ground coming out of Honda. Glenn's got a double problem here. He's trying to get past Larry Perkins so he can get back up to the lead where he was in the first heat. But he's got to cover himself from Greg Murphy. So just watch this. And it's contact here. Woof. Couple of contacts there with Glenn Seaton and Larry Perkins. Let's have another look at it as they come down into Honda Corner. Seaton's looking for the inside option. Larry says, uh-uh, you're not going to get through there, Glenn. Puts the brakes on extra hard, <laughs> closes the line. And... We're just talking about uh, Greg Murphy saying Russell Ingle Ing 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 used him as a braking marker. Nice little example there. Larry really did put on the brakes for Glenn. I don't think he would have made the corner otherwise, but they managed to get through and they've continued racing. Great action from Philip Island. Positions haven't changed. It's still Russell Ingle out in front. Here goes Seaton now. He pulls out of the draft, having a look up the outside of Larry Perkins. Here he comes now, around the outside of Larry. Perkins has got the inside line and he holds it there. Oh, oh. Seaton! Now, how is that for car control, Charlie O'Brien? That's 200, well over 200 kilometres an hour. Seaton and a big slide managed to gather it up. I mentioned earlier on that that corner tightens up, so if you go in there too fast, you know you're going to have problems coming out. Whoa, that was very close. Problems coming out of the southern loop there. Perkins gets two wheels over on the dust. A fantastic battle is second, third, fourth, fifth and sixth. Look at the battle here. Ford holding all over each other. Seaton on the attack as they come up the Honda corner once again under brakes. Murphy wants a slice of the action too. Then you've got the two Fords of Alan. Alan Jones and John Bow. Alan Jones isn't letting Greg Murphy get away, but let's keep our eyes on this second, third, and fourth. That's where it's a little tighter. Seaton has a look up the inside of Perkins now. We go on board with Glenn Seaton in the Ford Credit Falcon, having a look up at Larry Perkins. Larry is really making life tough, and all the while they're fighting it out. His teammate, Russell Ingle, is just drifting away. Really has got the hammer down, Ingle. He's running out in nice, clean air. He's not involved in this battle. All these guys slowing each other up. And Larry Perkins, as he proved at Surface Paradise, a very tough customer in this sort of warfare. He just loves this hand-to-hand -hand combat. Pretty much the same as round one. Greg Murphy had an easy win at Calder Park. This the second race, though. Very similar as oh. Perkins gets it sideways now. Larry giving it absolutely everything beyond the limit of adhesion there as he tries to get the power to the ground as they fling back toward the pit straight once again. Building up to 270 kilometres an hour. There's our laser speed gun, 245, 262, 268. So even more speed from the Castro Commodore in heat two. Seaton had a look at the outside of Perkins last time round. He was looking at the inside, but he wasn't as close. Here's Greg Murphy, though. Murphy is all over Seaton. Here's Perkins into the southern loop. We look back now. Murphy's dropped back just to touch half a car length. This is great action. Second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. Jones and Bauer still in touch. Russell Engel doing it easy. A 135 a one his last time through. 3.3 seconds at the gap over his teammate Larry Perkins now. Engel really is opening up the gap here. Mark, it's very interesting for me to watch this because Larry is going very, very fast. He's doing great lap times, but he's using lines around the track that is uh, totally unconventional. So, <laughs> Well, Ingle just under 35.8. We go on board with Glenn Seaton. Glenn Seaton racing the Ford Credit Falcon as he tries to find a way past Larry Birkin, just showing how critical it is to get a good start around here. A big contrast to the first race where Seaton just had it all his own way and just walked away from the rest of the field. He's really having to work hard for it here. Up over Lukey Heights, they come down into MG Corner. Most will go from fourth gear straight back to second as Perkins locks it up. And he did, he got right off that brake pedal. As soon as those wheels were locked, he was off it so he could make the corner. Perkins showing his, his experience under pressure there. But Glenn Seaton now will try and capitalise on that little mistake, see if Larry loses a bit of exit speed. Coming onto the pit straight this time around, try and make a move as they come down toward turn one. We go on board again, the Ford Credit Falcon. There we go, we're inside now with Glenn, having a look at it. Here comes Greg Murphy, he pulls out of the draft as well, having a look at the outside of Glenn Seaton. He's a little further back though. Alan Jones back there in fifth position with John Bauer right behind him, then it's Johnson, Faulkner the privateer, Brock in ninth, fighting his way through from the back of the field, and Longhurst in tenth position. 
Wayne Gardner with a little bit of work to do. He's back in 11th. All of the uh, Yokohama guys, Longhurst, Ellery and Gardner, having a tough time today running very high compound tyres and it just doesn't seem to be working here at the island. Blue flags are waving. That's telling Larry Perkins that Glenn Seaton's trying to pass. I don't think Larry needs a reminder from the side of the track. His rearview mirror is full of this Ford Credit Ford and Seaton is really piling on the pressure. Look at this freight train locked up behind him. Second, third and fourth. Larry Perkins, Glenn Seaton, Greg Murphy. They come onto the main straight. Here's our high camera angle. Just showing you the distance between the cars. About two car lengths between each of them as Seaton works the back of Perkins again. On the clock, that's coming out all the time. Ingle is working this field over. 4.5 seconds the gap now. He's just put a second on. Look at Murphy on the attack as he gets right up behind the court. Ford Credit Ford switching left and right, trying to find his way past Seaton. This is a great battle. Well, it's a tough... We work it round. Have a look at Greg Murphy. He's looking for options all the time, inside, outside, wherever he can possibly go. He's sizing up. Glenn Seaton, here they come. This is an interesting part of the track. Murphy goes the outside now. He won't get Seaton there. He's got the more preferred line, but he's trying to get a set up for the next corner. Is he Seaton... going to run out of road? No, he took it a bit conservatively there. Just tucked back in behind the Ford to fight another day. But Murphy is so pumped up after that incident. He wants to get to Ingle, but he's got a lot of work to do. Russell now 4.5 seconds in front of his teammate Perkins here. As we go back on board, Glenn Seaton's Ford Credit Ford shifting up through the gears, accelerating up to 240 kilometres an hour. Look how hard that suspension's working as they head up toward Lukey Heights. Cars get very light. Well, Mark, what a tough job it is there for uh, Glenn Seaton. He's sandwiched in between. He wants to get past. He's faster than Larry. Larry's blocking everywhere he can, which is legal to do so. But he's got to watch out for Greg Murphy. Greg is on a charge, and he could easily slip back another place. We'll see. He's the man looming round in the background. Greg Murphy, less than a car length behind Glenn Seaton now. They've managed to drop off the challenge from Alan Jones and John Bow. That shot indicates it very well. We have got five laps left to run in this second race. Can Perkins hang on and make it a Castrol 1-2? It's a real turnaround for the tyre companies too. The Bridgestone company normally absolutely dominant here. Certainly have been through our practice and qualifying. Now the Dunlop boys are taking the fight right up to them here. Russell Engel sprinting out the front of the pack. 4.7, he's just opened up, getting up toward a five-second gap over his team boss, who has his hands absolutely full. Look how close Seaton is as they come out of the southern loop. Now, camera shows you right on the back bumper of Perkins car 11 as they switch down toward Honda Corner once again. What a great battle from the V8 supercars. Great pictures from the front of Glenn Seaton's Ford Credit Falcon. Here we go, under brakes. Watch him come right up on Larry. Has a look up the inside. This is where he tried to get it before they made a little contact. Wasn't too major. Greg Murphy's doing a terrific job in the mobile Commodore, staying in touch. He has a look up the outside. Murphy's all over the back of Glenn Seaton, and time is running out. Well, the only way Glenn is going to get past Larry, I think, because Larry is doing such a defensive driving job here, is to actually fox on a couple of these corners, make it that he's going to go around one way, come back the next lap, and out fox Larry. Look how fast they are through this twitchy part of the circuit. Keep in mind, that's where Craig Lowndes and John Bow came to grief last year. You saw the damage it did to the cars when you come off at that speed. These guys riding a very fine line as they hammer over Leaky Heights. Up toward the pit straight once again. Seaton has a lot of speed, carrying a little bit of extra speed as they come onto the pit straight. He's going to try and set Perkins up and see if he can nab him down the straight. Murphy now waiting to bounce in this great battle for second, third, fourth position. Seaton's Falcon is in a Commodore world at the moment. One, two, and four are the Commodores. Falcon Glenn Seaton sitting in third. He pulls out of the draft again. He's been having a look inside and outside on Larry, but he can't find a way past just yet. 275 kilometres per hour down the main straight. Getting very fast, Mark. It's interesting looking at the back of that Ford Credit Falcon. Glenn Seaton, a former go-kart racer, of course, he has adopted that left foot braking tech. Look at oh. Perkins! Gets it sideways. Plenty of lock wound on there, but he managed to... Keep it in control and stay in front of Seaton. It's getting pretty desperate now. A fantastic job being done by Russell Engel. He has just walked away from the field. We've stayed with this battle. Now here's Murphy having a look up the inside of Glenn Seaton. We saw him do with this earlier on. We're on board now with Glenn Seaton. We watched the back of Perkins' car get a little taily on the exit of that corner. There might be a bit of buffing compound out up this race too. There's a bit of paintwork on the back of Larry's car. <laughs> There's a bit of evidence of just how hard Glenn Seaton is pushing him. Look at this fabulous shot from the front of the Falcon as he gives Perkins everything, working up through the gears once again as they head up toward Lukey Heights. Murphy, meanwhile, is trying to find a way past these two. Mark, I think that uh, little slide that Larry had back there on, on the Eastern Loop, uh, I think it may have had a little touch from Glenn. Keeping you in touch further back in the field, Faulkner is in eighth. 
Brock is in ninth and Stephen Richards has come up into the top ten. So they're right on the pace as well, but we stay with this battle. Second, third and fourth. It's Castrol, Commodore, Ford Credit, Falcon and Mobile, Commodore. Well, this will be a great result for the Dunlop teams. Tire they use at the Australian Grand Prix so successfully, proving very effective at Phillip Island this afternoon too. Whoa! We Oh, Murphy. look where he's heading. Goodness me, there's going to be a big accident. Murphy, straight on. Wow. Charlie, how Well, did... I think something had to break in the car there. It is a very fast corner, as we know, but he just went straight off. Never even looked like turning around the last part of the corner. Some that major would have... steering problem or something. That would have been a terrifying ride for Greg Murphy. Let's hope he's OK. He's hit that wall very, very hard. Look at the damage to the front of the car. Greg Murphy, well... He's conscious, it looks like he's talking to his crew, he's pushing that button on the wheel. Let's hope he's okay. Well, he looks like he might be, but boy, he would have taken the wind, wind out of him, that impact. The front of that car is just completely destroyed. Greg's getting out of the car, and as we said, we hope that he's all right. Well, full credit to the guys who build these cars, because look at the strength of that chassis. Murphy can walk out of that, he's had a major impact. Look at that, he really has had the wind knocked out of him. Yes, he'd be reeling after that, not only because he's out of the race, he's out of the points, but uh, that would have been uh, very hurtful. Yeah, we may have a red flag situation here. We're just checking with race control, but Murphy lying on the grass there. Yeah, red flag's out. So let's uh, have a look at this incident. Greg Murphy there, some people in attendance. Here is the replay. Now watch him. He just doesn't make the corner. He just goes straight ahead. So, Charlie, there's got to be some steering yes, problems. Yes, definitely. Either something mechanical or a tyre is deflated. Now watch this. Full impact, unabated speed. Kapow! Almost like a bomb going off. Look at the dirt get lifted up. He rolls it over, and fortunately the car ends back on its wheels. Mark, there's plenty of runoff room there. There's a, a long way between the track. <clears throat> excuse me, uh, between the track and the barrier. But what a shame there's not some sort of uh, slowing down device there because it could have saved that sort of damage. Well, every year they find a place. Here's Peter Brock, his teammate, looking very concerned as he came la past last time. And well, may he do so. Any driver who's been in an impact of that intensity would know how frightening it is and the risk of injury, how high. Well, let's remember, uh, look back to last year here at Phillip Island, Craig Lowndes had that horrific accident and Peter Brock himself over on the back part of the circuit, he went into the tyre wall as well. So uh, Phillip Island is proving not to be a very uh, happy hunting ground for the mobile HRT outfit. Let's have a look at that again. At normal speed, we saw the slow-mo replay. Now here, Murphy just straight off the side of the track and he has looks like he has no steering control at all. A shocking accident. Mark, quite interesting there. When the car gets closer to the tyre barrier, it's actually digging the right-hand front spoiler into the ground, which would tend to think that, yes, a tyre has deflated and it's actually digging the wheel in. Greg Murphy was, uh, well, nothing but a passenger in that one, just waiting uh, for the impact with that tyre wall. You can see that all of the relevant people are in attendance to take care of Greg. Some of the HRT boys that on site there as well well we're just saying what a fine line these guys are riding you think of the average speed of these cars at phillip island when you when something goes wrong with the car you really pay a heavy price well he's a, uh, a fit young guy and uh let's hope that he pulls through that one okay we did see him get out of the car and uh i'm sure that they'll just be uh checking him out making sure that he is okay certainly the car has sustained a huge amount of damage coming in contact with that wall we were uh, almost at the end of the second race. In fact, uh, they were just about to complete lap 10. Here is the Shell Helix race score for you. Russell Ingle at the time was in the lead. Perkins was in second. Seaton was in third. Bow fourth and Jones fifth. That is the end of that race. We've just had information. We'll be back after this break.